Welcome to Victoria Park, also known as York's Hollow, also known by its indigenous name, Barambin. This area has one of Brisbane's most unique histories, and I'm going to take a look around and find out what's here, and also what's on the drawing boards. Not only was this one of the main camps for the Turbul people, it was also a transit area for other tribes and groups of people, other clans moving through this region, especially coming from the Black Ore Range up north. So this became an area of exchange and ceremony and trade between the different indigenous peoples. Now this area here was known very early on as York's Hollow. And down here on Water Street, this used to be called Spring Hollow. So it became known as the Duke of York's clan by the early European settlers here. According to best estimates, in the 1840s, there were up to 400 indigenous people living here at York's Hollow. So where I'm walking right now is the southern portion of Victoria Park. What happened was this was all originally part of the park, stretching all the way up to Breakfast Creek, but the railway line was put in and then Gilcrest Avenue was put in, which has now been truncated. And, um, and then the inner city bypass was put through. So it's split the park, it's, it's detached this area off, but it's still part of Victoria Park. Now the earliest European use of this Yorks Hollow area was for timber getting and brick making. There were a number of brick making manufacturers here from the 1840s. And from what I understand, they lived fairly peacefully with the indigenous people who were in rather great numbers here. By 1865, by order of the government of the day, all the brick-making manufacturers were told to pack up and leave, except for one. He was allowed to stay because he was making bricks for the new Parliament House, which was being constructed. The area of York's Hollow once covered all of the land, now including the showgrounds, Bowen Hills, parts of Hurston, up to Breakfast Creek, and all the way to the Normanby Five Ways. In 1846, police led by Constable Peter Murphy dispersed a major Aboriginal campsite, killing at least three people and burning camps. This was in retaliation for the Indigenous murders of three European settlers at the Pine River. In 1849, a detachment of the British Army's 11th Regiment conducted another burning, also wounding several Aboriginal people. This was in response to apparently false reports that they had killed a bullock two police were sentenced to six months imprisonment for the offence. Okay, Bowen Park. In 1849, there were 253 immigrants from the ships Fortitude, Chase Lee and Lima. When they first arrived, they were billeted here at Bowen Park. Now, at the time, Bowen Park was part of York's Hollow. In 1860, Hurston House was built. The name Hurston is a combination of two names, Herbert and Bramston. Robert Herbert was Queensland's first Premier, and he lived here with his long-time male companion, John Bramston, who was also a politician. Now, even though Hurston House isn't within Victoria Park today, it was historically part of York's Hollow because York's Hollow reached all the way up to Breakfast Creek. Breakfast Creek is north of here, so Hurston House was in York's Hollow. That's what happened to York's Hollow, was gradually, gradually um, built on, little by little. You know, a building here, a hospital there, a house there, putting a road through. And uh, bit by bit, the area was encircled, as it is today. In 1865, a letter to the editor of the Brisbane Courier complained about the behaviour of squatters living in tents in York's Hollow. Apparently some of them were making a nuisance of themselves with bad behaviour and beating up school kids on Gregory Terrace. Yet some of these people actually owned homes in Brisbane, which they rented out at a tidy profit. But they lived in the tents as they paid no rent there. And then it was in 1875 that the park was opened. In 
1876, the very first exhibition was held, the ECA. All attendees to the event were given a free bag of coal. So it made it rather awkward carrying around a bag of coal with you the whole time. And just like Bowen Park a few decades beforehand, the ground that the Ecker is built on was also once part of York's Hollow. In 1877, the Queensland Rifle Association opened up their little rifle range here up at the northeast end of York's Hollow. It closed in 1883. In 1882, this train line here was put through from Roma Street Station up to Sandgate. And right about here, but across the other side of the railway line, used to be the former site of Normanby train station. And that was closed in 1966. In 1913, there was an experiment conducted by the Department of Terrestrial Magnetism of the Carnegie Institute of Washington to study the variation between magnetic north and true north. They set up two separate instruments within the park. Afterwards, they placed a small sandstone memorial on the site, which was eventually lost, but unearthed by archaeologists in 2001. This is substation four. It was built in 1928 amongst a bunch of other substations. I believe it was connected to the grid to power trams getting us power from the power station at New Farm. It's been disused for many, many years now. And during World War II, this substation, when it was in use, was protected by a barrier wall. I don't know whether it was sandbags or a stone wall, but obviously it was an important infrastructure and the American camp was right over there. So this was a target. So they, uh, they built a wall around it. I wonder what this is. It's a like a frame thing here. See that? I don't know. I don't know what this is intended to be. Marvellous view of a public utility right over there. Well, whatever it is, it's doing it now. Mm. This here is Gilcrest Avenue. It was put through in 1930, linking Bowen Bridge Road to Ithaca Street at Normanby. It was a road much needed by motorists of the day. Today, it doesn't uh, actually go all the way to Ithaca. It stops about halfway along. It dead ends in the park. And off to the side of the road, this rather mysterious little cutting in the land. I wonder if it was an old set of stairs or maybe just run off water in times of heavy rain from the golf course. And I do know that just across the road here on Gilcrest Avenue, there are a set of stairs dating to 1936 that don't now really seem to lead anywhere in particular. They must have something to do with the golf course. I'll go over the road and have a look. And while I'm in the area, there's a statue just over here, or a sculpture. The sculpture is really quite wonderful. It's just a shame it's so out of the way. It seems to be tucked in at the back of the park here, right next to the inner city bypass. I hope that when the park is redone in the coming years, that this is gonna find a new, more prominent place within it. I was just making my way up to the old clubhouse, the golf clubhouse, and down here on the ground, there's a golf ball. Oh. It's not terribly amazing, but this was a golf course, but it hasn't been for nearly two years now. So of course I have to give it a kick. I'm now walking onto the grounds of the old clubhouse. So it's all given over to healthcare, but this is it. This was the old clubhouse. And just here, I, something I've just noticed at the side of the car park, there's some stairs, but I don't know where they go to. 
some old stairs. If I was walking here more than two years ago, I would have been in trouble from the golf course administrators because this was the golf course. The public were not allowed just to wander around here. And I think that's why I never came here because I always thought the whole place was just one big golf course and of course I wasn't a member, so why bother going there? But now, it's open to the public. Clubhouse is way up the other end, up near the hospital. I'm down in the southwest corner of it. And great views of the city from up here. I don't think too many people come walking around this area. I'm not, I may be wrong, but there's certainly nobody here at the moment. So I suppose just down here, this was where a place where you would tee off. I think the last time I played golf was in 1983. Yeah, this looks like the place where you'd, you know, swing that putty thing and hit that ball. You can see the palm right in the middle of it being gradually surrounded and engulfed by this uh this what is it is it a vine or a tree i should know i've lived here long enough anyway that uh that palm's slowly being subsumed by this interloper another place to tee off look at that This rather faded sign here is talking about Camp Victoria Park. This was a US Army base during World War II. And the flagpole here was put up in 1943 uh, because this was outside the, what do you call it? The Gregory Terrace Officers Club quarters. There we go. Flagpole put up by the Americans in 1943 outside the Officers Club on Gregory Terrace. coming up to now used to be the site of a great many temporary buildings put up by the Americans during World War II. That's the busway station just over there, Hurston Road runs along it and behind is the hospitals. So all of this area here, all of this beautiful manicured lawn here, this was the site of temporary buildings and it was the same down on the southern side of Victoria Park as well. After the war these buildings remained and they helped to fill the housing crisis directly after the war. The population was booming. There just weren't enough housing for people. So all of these became temporary homes for hundreds of people. And behind me just over there is the new golf course clubhouse that opened in 1974. Now, even though the golf course is closed, a little part of it is still in existence and will continue to do so during the the new works that are going to happen here just behind me there is a putting range and that's going to stay i don't know i don't know what else they do there but that's still in existence so if you still want to go golfing up here at victoria park you've still got a bit of an opportunity over there another leftover from expo 88 this one is uh, from the inuit people up in canada the northwest territories it was built in the shape of a human to help direct herds Centennial Pool, opened in 1959 to celebrate the 100 years of the founding of Queensland. Oh, there it goes. The inner city bypass, completed in 2003. This was also on the lands of York's Hollow. So what's the vision for the future 
for Victoria Park, Brisbane City Council have this very ambitious project to revamp virtually the entire place. It's going to, well, have a look at the little video they've made. Victoria Park will become a natural retreat, an urban park for adventure, discovery and reconnection. A cultural hub and visitor centre will welcome visitors and take them deeper into the park's natural environment, heritage and significance to local Aboriginal people. It really does look beautiful. It's an impressive project, though it does talk about people connecting with nature. The nature that used to be here is long gone. This is a place that is now completely altered and man-made. It really is so strange to think that back in the mid-19th century, this was home to hundreds of indigenous people and it was a place of water holes and hunting and the wildwood and camps and ancient trackways. And then it became such a sterile, manicured, controlled environment. We look at it today and we see a former golf course and a place surrounded by the growing city of Brisbane. But it wasn't really all that long ago that it was a very different home to people. What I find so incredible about Victoria Park is the number of people who have called it home, even just temporarily. You had the indigenous people who were camped there probably almost constantly, but other tribes and other peoples would move through there, stay there for a while. Later, transients would live there. The, uh, the brickmakers were there for a while. Then you had people from the Depression living there who didn't have anywhere else to live. Then after, well, during World War II, you had the Americans who were camped there for a while. And then after the war, the housing shortage, Queenslanders not being able to live somewhere, so they would live there temporarily. The war brides were there. It was history repeating itself again and again. Different peoples coming to Victoria Park and staying for a while before moving on. So there we go, Victoria Park, York's Hollow, Barambin, and the future. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you haven't already done so, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And I'll see you again on my next adventure.